Hi everybody, my name is Massimo Banzi and I'm one of the co-founders of Arduino. Welcome to the second video in a series of videos about the Arduino robot. So in this video, David Quartieres and Kyung Yang are going to show you how to run the logo example on the robot, how to calibrate the wheels to make sure the robot goes as straight as possible, and how to use a remote control to control the robot itself. I hope you will enjoy it and take it away, David. Hello, this is David. This is Shun. We're here today to continue on the video series about the Arduino robot. Remember that the Arduino robot is an omnidirectional platform, which means it can move in any direction, can move forwards and backwards and turn by making the wheels turn in opposite directions at the same time. Today we're going to see how to first calibrate the robot to make in a perfect straight line. Second, make a program that will help you program movements on the robot directly from the keyboard on it. And third, check how to control the robot from an infrared remote control. Jun? Yeah. So let's first have a look how to uh, calibrate the robot. Mm, one thing very important about the robotics is that uh, no two models are the same. So if you, even if you ask this robot to go forward at the same speed for left and right, it's very likely that it won't be going a straight line. Mm, this is a point when we need to do the calibration. And uh, fortunately, we have a feature on the firmware that allows you to calibrate the robot with this uh, uh, potential meter on the motor board. We just need to uh, change the position of the potential meter. In order to check whether the wheel calibration is right or wrong, we have created a software example for you, which is example number six, called Wheel Calibration, that will let you calibrate by hand the robot's wheels so that it moves uh, straight over a line. So we will interact both with the knob here by following the instructions on the screen as well as using a screwdriver you will have to interact with the trimmer down here. But first let's upload the software on the robot to uh, start interacting with it. Sure. I will open the example on Arduino's ID. It's in the folder for the robot control. Here, robot control, explore, example number six, wheel calibration. This example is very simple. Like all the other robot examples, it first calls the Arduino robot library, and then it calls something called the robot text manager library. It's because we are handling a lot of different strings in the code, and in order to show them on the screen properly, we have stored them on um, the string um, here. And then in setup, we start up the robot, start up the screen, and start reading the SD card where we store all the different images for the instructions for the robot. And in the loop, you see that we do only two things. First, we check the speed of the robot uh, that's taken straight from the knob. And then we write uh, that information to the motors so that we see whether the robot is moving straight or not. Then we take the calibration value from the trim uh, controller, the trimmer that is on the bottom board, and we finally write up the value on the robot screen. In this way, you can take notice of this value and use it for future reference when you want to recalibrate your robot in the future. Okay, let's first find a small screwdriver that will be necessary for uh, calibrating the robot. And uh, as we have talked about, before that the USB cable actually uh, disengages the models, so you have to unplug it first, otherwise the models won't run. Yep. Okay, now let's turn on the robot. You can see the robot is uh, running very fast. Uh, you can adjust the speed by turning this potential meter. Let's get it slow a bit. And then uh, put it on a flat surface. See if it goes a straight line, and you can see that it's uh, very uneven, turning at uh, the, to the right direction a lot. And you can see there's a value on the screen showing 15, which is a value read from the trim on the bottom, which we can use to uh, calibrate it. Let's get it to uh, minus five, and also speed it up a bit. Mm, looks much better, but it's uh, still turning around a little bit. So 
So this time, let's uh, turn the value back to say two. Uh, and you can uh, further uh, calibrate it by using a ruler to uh, help it uh, to make sure that it goes a straight line. But uh, now we are going to stop here. We'll now continue with our next example where we're going to see how to control the robot's movements by programming them straight from the robot's keyboard. For doing that, we're going to use an example that is called Logo. You might remember the Logo programming language from back in the days. Um, oh, some of you might not even know what Logo is. The idea of behind Logo consists in having a virtual turtle that is on your computer screen and you give commands to it like move forward, turn to the right, turn to the left and that will make the virtual turtle move and will leave a trace on the screen. Well, we're going to implement a real-life version of the virtual turtle using the Arduino robot and we'll just tell it to move forward by pressing the button forward, turn to the right or left or backwards and then tell it to execute the list of commands by pressing the central button and it will just reproduce the movements we program. We have that as an example in our IDE. So we turn on our computer again, get the cable. We will continue programming our robot now. We'll connect the cable to the robot and then we just open the example called Logo using our examples. Robot Control, Explore, Logo. It's the first example for the Arduino Robots library. <clears throat> Here you see that in every example, first of all, we call the Arduino Robot library. We use an array called commands where we're going to be storing all the possible commands we'll uh, push in the robot. It has a maximum length of 20 commands. I think it's quite a lot of commands anyway. Then we start the robot, start the screen, start the SD card, and Let's take a look at what it does in the loop. In the loop, it's going to be calling this function called add commands. You can take a look at it later, but it's just going to be reading the commands from the, from the keyboard and storing them in the array. So when you press the white button, it will be calling them one by one, executing them in a row. So I make sure I have the right board, Arduino robot control, and the right serial port. And I upload the code to the robot. Once the robot is programmed, then completely remove the computer from the scene. And pass it over to June that will explain you how the program works again. Yeah. So this time let's turn on the robot again. And this program asks you to uh, press the buttons uh, for uh, up, down, left, and right a few times to uh, record the movements you want it to do. So uh, let's first start with something simple. First uh, go forward and then turn right. And now, if you press uh, the middle button, it's going to start moving. So let's put it on the table first. Okay, start. And now it's done. Mm -hmm. I will now send it back to June. So I'm going to tell the robot to go forward. And then turn one, two, three, four times and uh, run. It's going to fall off the scene. There you go. You get ready to stop it. <laughs> We're going to learn now how to use uh, infrared remote control like this one. It's a universal remote control to control the robot on distance. There is an example that you can use for working with the robot uh, using a remote control. You should know that not all remote controls work the same way. There is one clear thing that remote controls use a chip like this one. This is an infrared receiver, like the one you can have on your TV or your stereo or other things controlled by infrared home. And this thing contains both an infrared receiver and an infrared amplifier. So it makes it very, very easy to connect it directly to a 5 volts microchip, like the one that commands the Arduino robot, and read data from it. So in this case, we're going to use a remote control like this one but not all remote controls work the same. So we recommend you explore the Arduino expansion kit for the robot that will come with both a sensor like this and a remote control that are compatible with the software that comes with the robot. You could of course enhance the robot software to make it work with other infrared controllers. So first thing, you will need to connect it and uh, Yun has prepared a cable to easily connect 
and the infrared sensor to the robot. So, June? Yeah. So let's first uh, connect the uh, infrared receiver to the cable. It's just uh, like a normal component, so this platform is uh, very extens uh, extendable. Let's just uh, connect it to the port D2 as the sketch state. And uh, it's good that uh, we tape it in a good position. So it will not move around a bit, a lot. Okay, let's now program the robot, as usual, plug it to the computer. And we just look for the right example on the IDE. In this case, as I said, is the one called remote control, which is example number eight. You see that first, we'll see that this says that this example is experimental. Uh, it's just because you might be willing to use a different remote control. That's why we talk about using a universal remote control because you can program it to operate in different ways and it will definitely work with the sensor. So once you've opened the example, you will see that first we are working with a contribution by Ken Sharif that contributed to the Arduino code base by adding uh, in infrared remote control library. June work trimming it down so it fits for the robot. Then we include the Arduino robot library and we define a series of infrared commands. This is how you read a command as a series of numbers. You see that they are slightly different, each one of them, so they represent different commands in the remote control. So we're going to be reading upwards, downwards, left, and right. You will also see that there is a couple of places where you can change this code. For example, timeout is a variable that allows you distinguishing how often you are going to be reading the button. And after the classic initialization calls like start the robot, start the TFT screen, start the SD card, you will see that uh, the loop is a very, very small program where we're essentially just checking whether there was an IR remote control command received. And if it's received, we will process different uh, commands. The process result function is just deciding whether uh, you're going to send the motor forward, backward, turn left, or turn right. Mm -hmm. so this minus one and plus one that you see here are just multiplied by the multiplication factor so that the robot doesn't move too quick. So this 128 is setting up the speed of movement for the robot. If you want the robot to go faster, you could change this to 255 and it will just go uh, really, really quick. So I just program the robot with this code and check it out for real. The robot is now programmed and I pass it over to June. I will show you how it works. So now let's turn on the robot. Put it on a flat surface. And now we can control it with the remote control. So let's turn, turn back. And uh, now let's go forward. Go back. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And you see the robot is moving as long as you press the button on the remote control. So that's basically the idea. And uh, we're quantifying the time in fourths of a second. So if you change the timeout variable in the code, you will make it, you may make the movements last uh, in, in uh, multiple factors of one fourth of a second. It's time to call for a day, but before we hand over to Massimo, we should probably recap what we did today, June. Yeah, so in today's video, we showed you how to uh, calibrate the robot wheels, how to run the logo example, and how to control it with the remote control. Okay, that's all from Sweden. Hey, though. Hey okay, thank you, David, that was great. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and please uh, join us at the next videos in the series. Thank you.